welcome to the show. As always, I'm Dan Klansnick, and uh, we're here to discuss what's possible in construction. Uh, today, I'm here with uh, Alex Belkoffer from McCarthy. Uh, he's the director of VDC out of St. Louis. He was recently named one of the top 40 under 40 construction champions. So with that, I hope you got a parade or something cool. No? All right, cool. And uh, like I said, welcome, Alex. Uh, we're here to talk about, you know, the theme is what's possible in construction. So uh, first question is, uh, what are you piloting? What are you doing? What's cool in McCarthy right now? <laughs> All right. Well, thanks, Dan. It's exciting to be here today. A couple things. Um, I've talked a little bit in some of the recent conversations mm -hmm. I've had with folks like you about um, this concept of the integrated virtual builder. And at McCarthy, it's a pretty big deal right now. Kind of a broad statement, um, but it's really kind of our, our future state, you know, the way we're really trying to use construction technology throughout all of our McCarthy partners and all of our project partners. And the idea of being this, this integrated virtual builder um, and basically building virtually before you build physically is kind of a kind of a drumbeat and a mantra that we're, we're really moving towards here um, in the company. I would say in the last couple of years, you know, this this idea of IVB as we're calling it um, is really starting to just reach its you know reach its hands in a lot of different areas of the business, um, and it's exciting to kind of see it grow. Um, it, it's a big deal right now for us because we're seeing a big growth in collaborative project delivery, um, design build, IPD, uh, CM at risk with design assist elements uh, baked into them. And so this concept of IVB is, you know, how do we get more people on our teams to use construction technology, to innovate and use new workflows, um, and really come together earlier as people, you know, the human component of what we do, to stick all these things together, these ideas, um, and create these new methods of working together um, with, with the technology kind of being at the, at the back end, but more at the beginning is alignment around goals and using the technology to, to be lean, to streamline our processes, inevitably to to build faster, um, build more efficiently, um, build with uh, cost solutions in mind from the start, I and mean, really have just better collaborative projects. A couple things. So first thing I heard there was it was a very like fundamental thing. Like, hey, what are we doing with all this technology? Like, we're we're doing it to drive project value. We're doing it to drive customer value. Full stop. Mm -hmm. And and you know thematically, like, what are we doing? It's like we build it virtually. We solve a bunch of problems. We bubble up things because that's cheaper than doing that in the field. So when you build it in QA, QC it in the field, that causes issues, causes troubles, limits your solutions. We do it on the computer, you got more flexibility, you got more time, um, and that gives you, you know, more a, a better solution ultimately for the customer. But secondly, like, what does that mean? So obviously that means something more than doing clash detection, uh, but, but you know, how, you know, how are you guys integrating, you know, the field into that process? How are you integrating pre-construction into that process? And what are some lessons learned, uh, you know, on that on that roadmap? Yeah, for sure. Well, that's a lot to unpack. So, let's, <laughs> so pick and yeah, choose, man. Think, yeah, man. Well, let's yeah, let's dive in, right? I mean, you know, that's the biggest challenge, right? Is as VDC professionals and what we do is is we have to stitch together what I call people, process, and technology, and infuse those three things together to come up with a good roadmap on a project by project basis to determine. You know where is the value in what we do right and on this specific project where are the where's the risk where are the challenges going to be with collaborating with the building virtually you know are there existing conditions you know what are the unknowns and what's going to happen once we get out to the point of attack in the field so you know putting that that clear plan together at the beginning with all the stakeholders together and infusing that people process technology approach is, is really kind of where you start right um, but what's so important, I think, right now in our industry is we have a lot of great tech out there, a lot of disruption kind of happening, and positive disruption, right? There's a lot of best-in-class solutions coming out that we didn't have in prior years. So you got to make new processes. You got to make new workflows to accommodate some of those things because it's not the way we've been doing things for, for many years in our, in our industry, right? So we have these, these technology uh, disruptions. We have to create new processes. We have to get people to buy into them. And that's that fusion of PPT, as I talked yeah. I know we like acronyms, so I'll throw that one out there. Um, but we're, we're stitching all this stuff together. And yeah, it's not about flash detection anymore, right? Now it's all about how are we hosting models and how are we using models and, and doing things like issue tracking and, and comparing 2D and 3D and how are we using reality capture, not to scan existing conditions, right? But doing like utility mapping underground and, and doing as-built scanning and, and getting all this stuff to the point of attack. So the superintendent, arguably the most important person on the project, 
has all this stuff at their fingertips, they can make real time decisions. And it's not waiting for you to go back to the office and process a scan or, you know, oh, we'll fix that in the next meeting. No, let's fix it now in the meeting here because yeah. we can all see it globally. And, and the team is, is bought into this approach of, of real time coordination um, and real time decision making. So that's the fun part of what we're doing, right? But it's a challenge, right? And so that's yeah. PCT is an ever evolving thing. Yeah, can you give us an example of like so? So you listed off like five there, but the 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 thing I I want to hone in on is it's kind of the field and and the superintendent. Yeah. Um, do you got an example of like a new superintendent process that that falls under this umbrella uh, that you're working on implementing or have implemented? Well, sure. Uh, I'll I'll take something super simple that we've been doing for a couple of years now, um, but it takes a while for people to believe in it, right? So let's take a wet pore scanning. A lot of our superintendents um, weren't crazy about the idea of laser scanning a wet pore to, to determine FF, FL. Uh, that's floor flatness, just for everyone. Uh, floor flatness, floor leveling, and there's special ways of doing that. I just wanted to start to break in, but I wanted to make sure that was clear, but keep yep. going. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, so scanning, you know, a wet pour, you know, on a, on a deck as an example, you know, yeah. a lot of people don't think there's a lot of value in, in scanning that, Oh, it takes too long or you know, well, you're not going to get me the data um, that I need, or, you know, I'm not used to seeing that report or, you know, what does that really look like? And so sometimes you just have to go and do it, right. You got to prove it. Right. And we had a recent example where we did a wet floor scan um, in the basement of a 15 story tower that we're getting ready to construct. Um, it's a large pour. Um, there's a lot of, there's a lot of yardage there. Um, and we brought our, our laser scanner out there. And within five minutes, we had a deviation report and actually found a high spot that the, uh, that the guy doing the leveling um, didn't catch. And, and it definitely saved us because it's in an area of that basement where there was going to be some uh, pretty high precision equipment that needed to yeah. Uh, in that area. So it's just those little things about the superintendent having that report within five minutes, they could see it, have a conversation with the, with the concrete team to be like, Hey guys, might want to go back and check this again, which it was high when they went back and checked it, but, but getting it to the point of attack though, if that would have went back to the office, taken multiple hours, nobody was going to believe in it. Right. So we had to get it to the point of attack to the decision makers and that turned that person into a believer in wet poor scanning. Yeah. So what was your tech stack on that? Because because there's a lot of different ways to do uh, what you're talking about there. So I'm kind of very interested. Are, are you guys using like, uh, you know, Ferro, Leica tools to do the scanning? And how are you making that loop so so quickly, that round sure. trip? Sure. Well, we, we have a lot of partnerships, right? I mean, a lot of a lot of our key technology partners, um, the Autodex, the Leicas, um, you know, Trimble, you know, we have a lot of different solutions there. But you know, my big thing is single source of truth, and field and back. And so, you know, we use we use our Autodesk um, BIM 360 environment to kind of be that single source of truth. You know, we're using the Leica products to, to obviously hardware and software to, to do the processing, to, to do the scanning out in the field, to do the registration. Everything's tied to control. So everything is geospatially located. Mm -hmm. uh, but getting that getting that report back, you know, coming out of the Leica product, you know, you know to that superintendent out at the point of attack in the field. And then if we have to go and reshoot anything, you know, obviously we, we have the Trimble solutions out there for our portal stations. Um, they all kind of work together, uh, but that single source of truth and keeping everything in that one repository and then being connected to the other environments is, is a big deal for us. Everything needs to be connected digitally for us to do what we, what we do. So we look at, if we look at a problem solution framework, there's different technology that'll get you there. And there's like different apps or different like hardware, software solutions. But like, I, I like what you're saying, because that's like kind of secondary. Like, let's talk about like how we get the per you know, the decision maker, the information they need in the right format at the right time and all that. But, and then let's develop it so we can swap in and out different apps or different tools, but still get that same solution. So, you know, on a job site, say you have like a Leica like RTC 360, you can register on site on your iPad, boom, you can knock it out real quick. Um, but what if you don't have, you know, like the super nice scanner on that job, you got maybe a less, uh, you know, other, other scanner, like how do you still make that deliverable work for that job site? Uh, and I think as you're designing processes and essentially service solutions for your customers, in this case, the superintendent, that's a really important thing to keep in mind. I, I know I've done, you know, floor flatness before and I've done all sorts of crazy stuff where like, with Dynamo scripts and Revit to like give you things. Uh, we had one solution that was actually used civil 3D tools 
uh, because Civil 3D has some ways baked in to do like cut fill calcs. That's a great example of a service that's really all about the details because in the marriage of, of, I think, keeping control on your job site, tying in a like a robotic total station plus laser scanner flow, workflow is key for that. You know, as, as people out there listening to like, oh, hey, I want to do that on my job. Uh, that's really about like, let's dig into the details, but you don't have to get hung up on the software and hardware, but you have to get focus on those, those key results. Yeah. And Dan, um, just to that point, you know, when yeah. we're kind of talking about, you know, making those decisions and, and trying to, to do what's right for the project and, and kind of have a unified approach, you know, we, we have DDC uh, field services team members um, inside of our team here that are, that are really those subject matter experts, right? They're helping those superintendents understand, you know, when you need to use a high definition laser scanner that can scan up to a thousand meters, right? Um, versus something closer range, something that might be a handheld scanner, right? Handheld yeah. scanners are becoming a big deal. Um, and, and that's, you know, that's that opportunity to make those decisions on, you know, what scanning application and what piece of hardware is, is right for, for this specific type of deliverable. Um, does it need to be tied geospatially or not? You know, some things we have are kind of non-negotiables. Like, you know, we check all of our digital control on every project. It's kind of a, a standard here you know, for us, um, and we have in-house capabilities to do things like surveying. Um, we have in-house capabilities to do, you know, drone flights. So a lot of those, those deliverables and, and the value of all those things, we, we have that assessment done very early on in the project so that we can easily roll from checking the survey to establishing site monumentation and site control, then pushing it into the building for building control. And when we do all of our scanning, it's all tied together. So it's, it's all done very intentionally. And we have key folks on board that help those superintendents make those decisions. How do you manage what is essentially the standard of care at McCarthy? So what's required on essentially all these jobs versus like, what are the extra services? So you mentioned like, you know, some sort of digital control, you know, layout, setting that up, that's standard of care. So that's something that just comes with the package. But then you have these add-ons like, oh, hey, I got special equipment. I need an FF of this to meet the spec. Uh, Let's, let's make sure to double check that. Or, hey, I got this special condition. Like, I want these extra services. So how do you go about keeping, keeping that straight at McCarthy? Well, I mean, the, the biggest shift, you know, we, we did a couple of years ago, Dan, is, you know, VDC is really not a service at McCarthy, right? It's an integrated component to how we deliver our projects. And so that was a, a big paradigm shift for us in kind of moving away from what we had titled BIM Enabled Workforce and creating this integrated virtual builder approach, right? And VDC is not just done by VDC professionals. VDC can be done by our operations partners, our pre-con partners, our design integration partners, and all, all different aspects of that kind of bleeds into the different, you know, business units and functional teams in McCarthy. So, you know, the conversation around, you know, what does a project need from a VDC support standpoint it really looked at from the standpoint of, you know, the plan, design, construct, operate, the four primary phases of a project, where, where is the application for VDC process and VDC technology most needed because of this project's, you know, risk factors or the project's needs relative to the owner's goals. And so we're, we look at it very globally. And so it's not an a la carte, you know, oh, I think I want laser scanning on this job and maybe I want control, maybe I don't. It's really an approach, uh, a unified approach. Yeah. With, internal partners around what is the right VDC applications and the right process for this job. It's you have all these things that are possible, but it's about tell me what is going to drive the most value for this particular set of problems, this particular job, this particular, you know, whatever, team, stakeholder agreement, con contractual delivery, all the, you know, all the things that, you know, are involved in the complexity of building a building. Um, and then, but I did want to follow up on something you asked, you kind of led to about the future of VDC. You know, I have some theories. So, so, you know, you look back 10, 15 years ago, it was all about future, you know, VDC was some person who did things, you know, maybe model things. Like they were the first guy with email. Like, oh, look at that guy isn't using papyrus and carrier pigeons. He's using email. That's killer. Okay, let's just keep him going. But it, it's evolved. You know, and I want to talk about at McCarthy, it sounds like a strategic evolution of really integrating those tools into, you know, field and operations into these other things, while still having your subject matter experts, you know, that are like pushing the edge. But can you talk a little bit about like how you guys think about that and what the, that balancing and art of the future of BDC is? Well, yeah, I mean, you know, when I think about, you know, 
project delivery moving moving forward from 2020 into 2021 and beyond, right? And I yeah. have, you know, things like IPD and design build and this, this collaborative approach. The builder more often than not is, is being asked to do more earlier, right? In, yeah. in terms of, you know, pre-construction services, design phase integration, helping the owner really look down the path, you know, for, for building life cycle. We're being asked to do more, right? And so we have to have more folks on the same page and engaged with all aspects of the project delivery and, and be in unison, be unified from start to finish to tie all these, tie all these capabilities, workflows, deliverables together and, and be like-minded. And so I think the future state for us really is more of the fusion of our different, you know, project leaders from operations to scheduling to quality to pre-con to VDC to design integration, all these folks coming closer and closer together to help define the, the project delivery process earlier with our clients, with our design partners, with other stakeholders. So yeah. it's a really unified approach, a really well-oiled machine. And I think that's a differentiator that our industry really needs to start grasping a hold of is we're not doing these, these projects in silos anymore. We can't afford, yeah. we can't do it with budgets. We can't do it with schedule. We can't do it with the high level of quality. We have to be aligned earlier and hired earlier in the process. And if we could do everything design build, you know, maybe that is a, a future scenario that we could all, you know, get on board with and live in, but it's uh, about doing it together, right? The human aspect of building, designing and building projects is never gonna change. How do we get better at working together from the human element with processes, with technology, kind of supplementing that, that like-minded approach? So say you had like a magic wand, say you could have any technology, a software that did anything, um, you know, but but really kind of like broke down those silos, created that sort of internal external collaboration framework. All that stuff you're talking about. So you could do anything. What would your magic software in 2022 do for you? What would it look like? There's so much great stuff out there. I'll, yeah. I'll it two ways, right? I mean, just just the visual component and having having one environment. I can't tell you how many times people say. You know, make it three clicks or less, Alex. Like, just get me a solution where I only need to do a couple clicks and then I get to where I need, right? Because yeah. everybody is, oh, I got to go into Autodesk BIM 360 to do this. I got to go to Procore to do this. I got to go into Revisto to do this. I got to go into, you know, whatever, Bluebeam. It's just too much, right? People want, they want it simple, right? We have to, we have to make their lives easier. So my wave my magic wand is one visual environment, call it a dashboard, call it a integrated, platform, whatever, one environment for 2D, 3D, reality capture, just one holistic project environment where people can can collaborate, communicate, iterate, um, you know, track things down, you know, stay connected. We need one connected environment. No one has that magic wand. It's, it's not there. Um, and if it is, someone please challenge me. We're getting closer every day. Yeah. You know, great solutions out there. Um, but we need that one holistic, unified environment. And I think people are trying to get there, but it's tough, right? There, there's a lot of com complexity with these technologies and APIs and integrations and stitching things together and getting information from one bucket to the next. I totally get it. But that's the fun and that's the challenge of what we're doing, is trying to make people's lives easier, to mitigate risk, to solve problems, to drive solutions and have best in class deliverables. Perfect. So with that, I just want to say uh, thank you for spending some time with us today. And uh, thank you all for listening. And uh, take care. Have a good one. Bye. Thanks, Dan. <laughs>